So this is Heavengate, Act 4 from 2010. Last time on Heavengate Act 3, Neil had kicked a gang out of Bloomington to make room for his dojo. One of the gang members, with some hired help, came back to settle the score. Jenny took care of the fighting, proving her considerable skill. But when the gang member tries to run Neil down with a motorcycle, Neil proves his considerable strength when he stops it with his bare hands. Jenny, having been, Jenny, having been locked out of her house by her dad, stays the night at Neil and Courtney's. This causes Courtney to question if something is going on between Neil and Jenny. Bloomington, Illinois. It puts the phone down. Oh, I should say, I'm surprised I didn't put this in the in the recap. But uh, if you recall, the last issue ended with Neil getting a phone call from his brother Brian in the military about a demon, which is probably referring back to issue one of Heaven Gate when we saw Draco Mabus completely destroy Area Fifty One. So, Bloomington, Illinois phone down takes a seat what's wrong hmm. oh neil you can tell me <laughs> he didn't tell me much but it seems a military base was destroyed by a demon did the gate open he didn't say but seems but seeing as how only a Jaeger can touch the sword sealing the gate, I don't see how it's possible. Then I don't understand. How can a demon be loose? I don't know. Brian wants to meet in Eureka tonight. Hmm. What are you doing? Calling Jesse and Jessica. Why? You may need their help. Jesse can see demons when they hide in human form. And to use your fourth form, you need me and Jessica. All right. Heaven Gate. Hellgate the movie. Act four. Go ahead round at night. I don't see why she needed to come along. Small text. Here we go. The Lake Eureka High Security Army Base. Formerly known as Eureka, Illinois, the college home of President Ronald Reagan, the town happened to be the location of the Hellgate. In 2009, following the sealing of the Hellgate, the United States Army began relocating all of Eureka's residents. The town was transformed into an army base so that the Hellgate could be closely guarded in the hopes that it would never be opened again. Please wait here while an escort is summoned for you. Hard to believe this is where we grew up. Two more cars show up. Oh. Neil! Jesse! Hugs. I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah, things have been busy, really busy with the dojo. Penguin? Zark! Neil! Glump. What's wrong with you? You never stop by the salon. He's like, don't, don't, no, don't touch my hair. I see the color is staying in nicely. Yeah, I use the shampoo you recommended. Who's the babe? Bam. This is my girlfriend, Kiana Nearhai. It's nice to meet you. Lesbians. Everyone, this is Jenny Carvis. She's a student at my dojo. Cute little thing. What the hell is going on here? Only the Demon Slayer was requested. The rest of you have to leave right now. These people are my friends. They have a right to be here. They helped. I don't care. It's bad enough we're letting one civilian on base, even if he is the former Demon Slayer. Huh? Huh? So should I tell Master Sergeant Jaeger that you're the one holding up his little brother? He's the Master Sergeant's little brother? Oh. Right this way. You're going to be doing push-ups for a week. What? <laughs> Forgot about that. 
I'm Staff Sergeant Raymond Moody. I'm very close to your brother. What was that? I don't know. Close? Yes. You could say I'm like his bodyguard. I didn't know my brother needed a bodyguard. It's common for someone of his rank. So, Meister... This is where you grew up? <laughs> she keeps calling him Meister. What the heck does that even mean? Anyway. It's German for Master. Master? Yeah, as in Dojo Master? Oh, of course. You're getting jealous of her. You think something's going on between them. What? I... Don't drive him away like you did when you thought he was in love with me. Maybe she's right. So cute! We're here. Master Sergeant... Staff Sergeant Moody reporting in. The guests have arrived. Master Sergeant Brian Yeager, age 45. Brian! Hi, bro. We live so close now, but I see you even less. Yeah, they keep me busy here, but Donna and the girls love when you drop by the house. That's your brother? But he's so... And you're all... <laughs> Everyone, please sit down. It's time to get to business. Everyone seated. First of all, let me confirm. The Hellgate is still sealed. The entrance to the cave it's in is well guarded and cameras monitor the gate 24-7. Then how could a demon... Let me explain. In December of last year, the Mars Northern Pole Expedition found something in the ice. What looked to be a frozen Martian. When the expedition returned five days ago, they brought the creature still frozen in the ice. It was taken to the Groom Lake facility in Nevada. Area 51! It does exist! Duh. Obama admitted that like three years ago. Oh yeah. Anyway... Somehow, the creature was freed from the ice. Not only that, it was still alive. We only got a few images from Groom Lake. But it seems the creature made short work of the base. As far as we know, there are no survivors. But wait, that means he's a Martian, not a demon. You're not entirely wrong. <gasps> Demonic, trainer of the holder of the sword. D Demonic! What's that thing? I have no idea. What are you doing here? I thought you ascended to heaven. You'll need my help with this because I know this creature personally. You do? His name is Draco Mabus. He killed my wife and son. In truth, he didn't actually kill them, but he's the reason they died. I'm confused. Right. I guess I should start from the beginning. It's time. Time to tell of my past life, the life destroyed by Mavis, over six billion years ago. Act four, end. A fan art section. We got these two pieces by Ginny Caddish. And this piece by Miranda Gusek. Next time on Heaven Gate, act five. Demonic's tragic past is finally revealed, the truth behind the unspeakable crime he's alluded to all these years. Meanwhile, Mavis begins making plans of his own. Credits, art and story, Nathaniel Yeager. Military consultants, Brian Yeager and Raymond Mowdy. For daily updates on the progress of the next issue, follow Yeager Inc. on Twitter. Twitter.com slash Yeager underscore Inc. That is defunct. That's not my Twitter handle anymore. A lot. A lot to go over with this issue. Starting with the cover... Um, I actually had a hard time figuring out what to even put on the cover of this one. And I ended up just putting like Neil and Brian in these honestly somewhat absurd poses like Neil, whatever. Neil's kind of a showboat. I don't know what the hell that pose is for Brian. It feels completely out of character. Like, what, what is, that's not how you hold it. What are you doing? What are you doing, my guy? I will point out that again, I was taking full advantage of, um, taking full advantage of the new Photoshop medium that I was using at this point. And just kind of using an actual camo pattern on Brian here instead of coloring one by hand. Um, 
and using an actual wood grain pattern for the wooden sword, but we saw that with the last uh, cover. But yeah, probably, I don't know, probably my least favorite Heaven Gate cover. Um, I remember when I was post these on the Gaia forums, I got a lot of crap for my usage of digital mixing with traditional. And in their defense, yes, this does look very bad and very, uh, it just sticks out very poorly. Um, I would get better at blending the two over the next few issues before I went full digital. Um, this scene, one, well, you can tell I ran out of like, I think this red right here, I ran out and had to switch to a different red. You can see. So that's fun. Um, the perspective on the background in this scene is hilariously bad. Especially here. This is atrocious. Like, oh yeah, you know, vanishing point there and we just make our lines go there. Seems so simple. Except it is completely divorced from the foreground. Like, this makes no sense. Like, it's not... If you're looking at them almost from the side, you're not going to see the entire fucking couch going up to, towards... The, it just looks like there's a couch on their wall. <laughs> oh, man, that's bad. Oh, it's horrendous. Oh, boy. Who oh, man. And we get a little... We get a little Courtney butt there. Um... Here I'm kind of reintroducing uh, the importance of Jesse and Jessica to readers if they didn't read Hellgate. Um, here's a classic example of why I, I I need to get better at the angel wings because like it, it makes sense here when you can see it like it starts here and it goes down and it goes up. Um, but like in silhouette, it just looks like he has wings coming out of his mid back. It's just. I was trying to go for a more realistic wing structure because usually when you see angel wings there's usually only like there's the it connects at the base and then there's one joint at the top and that's it uh, when in actuality there should it should go down a joint up a joint and then that's the whole thing it should be a two joint thing like like this like actual tetrapod arms right like this is the the elbow and this is the wrist and a lot of angel wing designs skip this part and just go with the wrist part. Um, and I, I didn't want to do that because I, I, this makes more sense to me in terms of me posing it, but I do need to get better at actually posing it because if I pose it the wrong way, then it just looks like it's a wing coming out of like his fucking middle back. So um, with me having to draw that more soon, it's something I'm being very conscious of that I'm actually, I want to actually pull it off right this time. Uh, and for our cover page, I decided just to show off Neil's fourth form. And this is exactly pulled straight from Hellgate in terms of the design. Neil with his short hair, he's got all the, the cuts. And, and uh, this, this is directly from the final battle of Hellgate um, with all the, the cuts and scars and whatnot. Uh, I like this car, I think. So this is kind of funny. So um, to draw these cars, I actually traced um, through paper. Um, my drawing table at the time was this plastic tray table that I would draw on and I figured out if I took my lava lamp and took the lava lamp part off and it's just a light bulb pointing straight up I could put that underneath and use it as a light table so I could see reference through my paper and then I could like trace um uh trace uh like these cars here and I talked to my dad about this about kind of wanting a light table and I ended up actually getting one this little like plastic like light table for that purpose my dad almost built me when he was going to build me a desk with a built-in light table and i'm really glad he didn't because i did not stick with light tables that long before moving to digital uh, before i knew i was going to go full digital with art um i thought a light table was the next logical step for me um because that was common among um i think a lot of manga artists will use light tables or did use light tables. So they would sketch, instead of sketching, inking, and then erasing the pencil, in order to make the lines very pristine and not fuck with your line art after the fact, they would sketch and then use a light table to ink on a new page. Um, and I was going to start doing that, um, but then I switched to digital. It was not necessary. Um, 
And here we first see that um, Eureka has been transformed into an army base. We'll be seeing a lot of that in the series. Um, we got this, <laughs> we're introducing Hippo to all these characters who aren't used to a random penguin. You can tell I put um, a, like a color filter over top of this scene to make it dark. Gets the job done, but it could be better. It'll get better with time. I like that I didn't use black. I'm using some sort of like bluish purple here. So that at least makes it look a little bit better. And yeah, if you didn't quite see here, basically we had this one soldier who was like telling him off, realizes that he's telling off his commanding officer's little brother. And then Hippo just goes in for a kill strike out of nowhere. And we just hear the wail. Random attack penguin. Um, I, I really liked this frame. <laughs> but it came out really well. It was like kinky mental image that Courtney got when she realized that Jenny calls Neil master. Um, and yeah, I like, because in a way, this is kind of repeating a plot point from Hellgate. You know, if you remember, Courtney had trust issues in Hellgate and she thought there was a thing between Neil and Jessica. I, I like that Jessica is just bringing this up very frankly. Like she's immediately reading the situation like, hey, uh, you're getting to be that way again. So just so you know, s stop it. <laughs> um, and then we have our reintroduction, reintroduction of Brian. We have seen him in earlier issues, um, but very briefly. Um the main changes to his design is I added some wrinkles to his face because he's in his mid forties now. Um, and I added a little bit of gray in his hair. And this joke here, this er and ad, this is based on an actual thing that happened. Um, one time when I was, cause the, Brian is based off my brother. And of course, Neil is based off of me. Um, one time I uh, was meeting with my brother out in California and I had a friend with me and my friend was very surprised to see what my brother looks like compared to me because my brother is very much a carbon copy of our father, very much a big masculine, masculine looking man. And plus he's military. He was a drill sergeant at one point. Um, I've started to grow into the Jaeger build. Like I'm, I'm wider than I realize. I, uh, then in my head, like I, I'm, I've grown into the stockier frame of my father. Um, but at the time I was an absolute string bean. And so this is something a friend actually said, that's your brother, but he's so err and you're all, eh. <laughs> my dad was there for that. He, no, that's right. It wasn't just my brother. My dad was there too. And they said that about both of them. Like that's your dad and brother, but they're all err and you're all, eh. Um, so yeah. And of course, that's very dependent on delivery. Like, and eh. so uh, I one, I use different fonts, and two, I used visual indicators so people could tell what I was getting at. Um, then these flashbacks are actually just cut and pasted from earlier issues. I didn't even redraw them. Same. Uh, this here, though. Yes, yes. This is. I did draw this for an earlier like viewing screen an earlier issue and then I put a digital effect on it to make it look like uh, it was bad footage. And then we bring back Demonic and yeah, next issue we're going to talk about Demonic's past. And we get the fan art. Um, <laughs> these almost feel more like um, Naughty Hippo. This one feels more like Naughty Hippo fan art than, than Hellgate because I guess this is me and this is my underwear, and I think Hippo's making a rope out of it. Um, and then this is me and the artist holding hands. Um, this is a long time ago. She, she had a bit on Crush Me. It was pretty cute. Um, and this was uh, another person who drew themselves and Hippo. And yeah, that was Heaven Gate. Act four thank you for that redeem the gamer boy thank you so much for watching if you liked this video make sure you hit the like button and i'd love to read your comments below and make sure you're subscribed so you know when the next comment goes up
Also, check the description for a playlist of any readings you may have already missed. And if you'd like to read ahead, all of these comics are free on my website, JaegerComics.com. Bye!